What is up guys, Dan from the Sam Madden YouTube channel. Today's video, we're gonna talk about why wide receiver screens are actually pretty viable against man coverage in Madden 21. But before we get into the video, please do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. Also make sure you guys take the time to hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of the uploads coming your way here on the Sam Madden YouTube channel. If you guys wanna take your game to the next level in Madden 21, check out my strategy site, gridirongameplans.gg. Gridiron Game Plans is your one-stop source for all things competitive Madden. Every week in our Vault update, we take a look at the meta, or the most effective tactics available being used by pro players on the MCS circuit, breaking down not only how and why the pros do what they do, but most importantly, how you can counter those metas when you face them in online head-to-head -head gameplay. On top of that, your subscription also includes any and every offensive and defensive game plan released on the website while your subscription is active. So head over to gridirongameplans.gg, $9.95 per month will unlock the entire website and you can opt out at any time. Okay, guys, without further ado, let's get into today's topic. We're going to be talking about why wide receiver screens are actually pretty good in Madden 21 against the man coverage meta. Now, it's not just any wide receiver screen that you're looking for. You're actually looking for wide receiver screen plays in which you have pulling linemen. And the reason for that is that when you take the field, especially if you're facing man coverage, you have to understand that it's a numbers game, it's mathematics. So you're talking about a situation where if you have two receivers, one of which is blocking, you're gonna get two guys that now need to be blocked because you're gonna have the guy on the receiver that needs to be blocked, and you're gonna have the guy that is guarding the blocker that also needs to be blocked. So mathematically, when you face man-to-man -man coverage, it can be a little bit of a challenge to throw this particular ball because you don't have enough blockers for the amount of players that are in the area. That is why you need the ability to have pulling linemen on a play. Now we're gonna take this in kind of some levels and show you guys the most basic way that you can run this, how you can improve it with ratings, and then we're gonna show you at the end an ability that you can try to use, which is kind of, uh, I would say 50-50, whether or not it's worth using. Uh, so right here, we're in the Pittsburgh Steelers offense. We are in the gun stack Y off formation, and we're choosing to play PA Geovake screen, which is actually one of the default audibles in this formation. You may notice that with this particular play, you have three pulling linemen on the screenplay. So you have that slot receiver, which his guy then gets brought into the equation. And then you have the left tackle, left guard and center all blocking on this play. So obviously we have the running back, the right guard, the right tackle and the tight end all blocking on this play. That's only four players. So use this against the most popular meta which is far and away the mic blitz or the mid blitz where you drop your outside linebackers into 25 yard purples and then usually this guy is in a blitz assignment but he's actually going to be a user over the middle of the field so we'll mimic it by doing something like this since i can't control both controllers so what you're going to be able to do here with this play is you're going to be able to kind of throw this ball wait for these cut block animations and you'll notice that sometimes guys don't do the job uh, and that's kind of why I wanted to start at the low level. One of the most important things on this particular concept is that your players have impact block. You may notice that right here, Fisher did a pretty solid job of impact blocking. He just cut his man in the middle of the field. But then we kind of got a bunch of nothing out of the rest of our players. So what I've got here is I've got a couple players on the bench here for the Chiefs. Let's go ahead and go back into this here. I've got a couple players here on the Chiefs that are pretty solid impact blockers. Let's go ahead and put them in. The first is Mitchell Swartz. The second is going to be Kelechi Assembly. Now, for the sake of this tip as well, Zach Martin also has really high impact block, but he also has an ability. I'm going to leave him on the bench just for right now. I'm going to put Fisher back in at center. We're going to call this exact same play. Now, unfortunately, with this particular screen call, I can't motion that one receiver out of the play, but there are other screen calls in the game where you can motion that wide receiver blocker out of the equation to make it so that way Demarcus Robinson on this play is not doing anything. You motion him, he'll pull his guy away, and it becomes three offensive linemen against one guy guarding Tyreek Hill. But for the sake of this particular play, you're going to be able to kind of, uh, you see right here, you get these better block animations. They hold their blocks or they just completely cut their legs out. 
Uh, so this particular stack Y off screen call is, is good, but I wish it could allow you to maybe motion Robinson away. I want to kind of take that to another level here. Um, I'm going to look for another screen call just to kind of illustrate what I mean here. So let me see if I can run. Here's an example of like wide receiver screens out of the empty Steeler. And again, I'm going to put that Mitchell, uh, that Mitch, Mitchell Schwartz at right, right tackle. So you see here on this play, the right tackle pulls, uh, and you're going to, we'll run this against man coverage again. This is kind of an illustration of uh, what I would do out of some of the other screens. So let's we'll say for whatever reason, now they run purple zone meta, making it look like they want to use or blitz you, yada, yada, right? So looks like this. What I would do is I would motion either one of these two guys, I would probably leave the guy that's the better blocker, which is obviously Kelsey. And I would motion a guy away. So now we're in a situation where you have Robinson and his guy, Kelsey and his guy. There's two players out there. And now you need two blockers for those two players. So now this allows me to kind of wait. Uh, you see that you get a better block animation. Actually, the guy that was at safety guarding Travis Kelsey didn't come down, which actually makes that better. And now your numbers are far better. So it's always advisable against man coverage if you can to motion numbers away. You see right here, if you get a safety on this player, he won't actually end up doing anything. In fact, you notice he actually blitzes back across the formation, which is something else I wanna talk about. This is something that is not a fluke. A lot of times blockers on wide receiver screens against man coverage follow the tight end delay fade rule. So you notice right here that the guy that gets assigned to Travis Kelsey just bails. He's like, all right, my guy's not running around. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go play the quarterback, which then allows us to then have numbers on this. So now you see in this situation, this wide receiver screen out of empty, you would expect two on two out here and you'd wait on your tackle. Truth is the tackle blocks his guy, the guy guarding the tight end leaves and this allows us to throw the ball and Kelsey gets a really good block on Gilmore, allowing us to throw the ball the outside. This is the exact same logic that exists in Say for instance, let me run single back doubles. I'm gonna put my tight end into a delay fade. You guys know this very well at this point. If you are playing man coverage, I want you to watch this here. I want you to watch Bentley. Bentley on this play, on a delay fade to the tight end because he is not blocking, he basically will either blitz or you can scramble out and then he'll blitz you. So you saw right there in that situation, he blitz right away as a middle linebacker. But we'll go ahead and uh, let me go ahead and do this here out of like a, a zero blitz. We'll stay in this zero blitz call. Uh, so that way it's a safety. So we audible into, you know, something else here. Uh, Gun bunch doesn't follow those rules. Let's run like trio, right? So now we put Kelsey into this delay fade. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to snap the ball and I'm going to roll out. And you're going to see as soon as I roll out, you see that the guy chases the quarterback and leaves Travis Kelsey alone. Uh, that is what the, the standard rule is, right? As soon as you break the pocket with the quarterback, the man that is guarding the tight end now becomes disinterested in the tight end and is more interested in the fact that he's not running a route. And he'll say, okay, I'm gonna chase the quarterback now. So now he's no longer guarding Kelsey, even though there was pressure on me right there. You can see that he didn't guard Kelsey after that play. So this is kind of the same logic when you run an empty screen where you get this safety that's like, okay, well, Travis Kelsey's not running a route. Let me go ahead and just, uh, let me just go ahead and, and you know, blitz the, blitz the quarterback or, you know, run to the middle of the field. So now you end up with a scenario where he runs away. And now all of a sudden, if you get a block on the guy, you're in good shape. Now, again, those blocks by receivers on DBs are a little bit less consistent. So let's go back to your stack play, for instance. So, Go back to the stack Y off. Run the same type of meta, right? We go back, uh, let's go ahead and run cover one contain, for instance. So if they're playing press shading over the top, they're putting those purple zones on the field. This is how you're gonna be able to see if I scramble, how he chases. That's that same logic that we just saw. And then of course you get the cut blocks. So this stack Y off is better. Now I didn't need to scramble right there. I just did it to kind of show that the guy chases the quarterback. It's the same logic in every single screen call in the game is if you basically scramble with your quarterback, they will chase you. Now again, if you get the right cut block animation on them, just throw the ball out there. You see, as soon as they cut their legs, just throw, just throw the ball to X. 
you see right here how you got a convoy i do think that jailbreak screens are far and away the best screen call in the game uh now there are other stack formations or jailbreak screens where you can motion so i'm going to go ahead and split this video and we're going to show you another one where you actually can motion away on a drill jailbreak screen So now I went ahead and switched over to the Seattle Seahawks offense. The previous example, as I mentioned, was in the Pittsburgh Steelers. And we're going to show this PA jailbreak screen concept out of the gun doubles Y off. Now, in this particular formation, it's not a stack formation. So my recommendation for this tip is to put the ball on the near hash to make this throw a lot shorter and to make the distance traveled for your lineman a lot shorter. shorter. So uh, as we kind of break this down here, same principle of uh, just different spacing in terms of the formation and what we're going to do is motion robinson away in a way that we couldn't in our previous screen so now we've got one guy guarding hill and we got three guys to go block him and again we don't have our high impact block players on the field right now but what you're going to do is just kind of let them throw that cut block you see how dynamite this really is out there in the open field on the short side so now there's really some kind of levels to this we're kind of showing you how you know, the principles from the, you know, the empty base flex or the empty stealer that we showed you in the previous uh, portion of the video can apply to, you know, these PA jailbreak screens. The PA jailbreak screens are awesome because you get three linemen pulling on them. You're combining the element of motioning the slot receiver out of the equation, adding the three linemen into the equation, unlike the spread screen where you only get that one tackle that is trying to get out there and really doesn't do it consistently. So kind of piecemealing together the best elements of the spread and the best elements of the PA screen together to arrive at kind of a final conclusion of what makes a screen really good. So uh, again here, if you're facing any of this rush three, rush two meta, where they're kind of doing this and setting 25 yard purple zones, this is the way to go. Absolutely the way to go. Again, you're gonna snap the ball. You're gonna wait for that cut block animation. Boom, throw the bullet pass and you're out. You're just gonna run right up that sideline. You know, you're gonna pick up that blocker on the 25 yard purple zone and you can be gone to the crib. Now, this is where I wanted to kind of talk about whether or not you wanna spend the AP on this. You'll notice that with this particular concept, we get the cut block from our left tackle. We throw this ball out and look who the player that's gonna be first to the 25 yard purple is gonna be. It's gonna be our initial center on this play. He's gonna be the guy that's gonna go get that 25 yard purple. So this is where I would recommend maybe looking at an ability known as screen protector. Screen protector is a glorified nasty streak on screen calls. So I'm gonna go ahead and sub in Zach Martin on this play. Zach Martin, I moved from the Cowboys to the Chiefs. I'm go ahead and put my higher impact block players back in as well while I'm at it. And Zach Martin is going to be able to get out to that third level where that 25 yard purple is. And that's basically going to guarantee nothing short of a road grade. And preferably he stays on his feet. Uh, not always, but you would prefer that. So that way he can go get the next guy too. So again, now in this example, we motion Robinson away. Here's our defense shaded over the top purples. We're going to let cut block happen bang throw the bullet pass now we're running up the field and you saw right there zach martin got a, a true pancake animation on his guy and again if i have better stick work we're probably looking at a touchdown on this again you see right there boom cut block if you can anticipate this and throw get this ball you know right as they're about to be a, a yard away if you can start your throwing animation like right here when they're about a yard away that's going to get the ball into the hands of Tyreek so much faster, allowing you to turn up field. Now, unfortunately, the only thing you really can't change about this play is the fact that this backside slant is going to pull his guy into the play. If he doesn't pull his guy into the play, we are gone. We are very clearly gone because the guy that makes the tackle uh, is actually McCourty, but that was a guy that we could very easily avoid if assembly number 70 gets a block on him. Really, all we're looking at is if we could get Gil, if we could get Gilmore blocked from that backside, that would be much preferred. But again, here, anytime you're facing this heavy zero blitz meta, it would be advisable. And I know many of you are in Seattle. That's why I chose Seattle, because I think this is a really good example of a, a screen call. You can go against this one step ahead meta. And I'm going to move Gilmore over there in just a moment. Um, but again, here, you know, you let him get a yard away and then 
you know, throw this ball out. And then if you can get that, that you know, that edge, that, uh, I'm sorry, screen protector ability to light up, uh, you can pick up another, you know, deep leader downfield. But again, you haven't really seen the results being worth one AP to me. I would just stick with another good impact blocker. Make sure they have good speed and acceleration. You don't want somebody slow getting out there because that's really what's gonna make this play spring is, you know, if, if that guard and center against this meta can get out wide and get out in front of you, that's really where you're like looking at your best success. Uh, but again, here, if you want, if you want to ensure that you get the, the pancake on that edge guy, now you could go ahead and put Zach Martin with that, that screen protector as your, as your tackle as well. That's another thing to consider. I'm trying to use it to design it to get that block downfield. Uh, if that's not working for you, you can put that player right there at tackle and try it this way. Again, whatever works best for you. Me personally, I probably wouldn't spend any AP on this. I'm just letting you know that if you're psycho enough and you want to do this, it is something you can do to help with the success rate of the block, especially on the, the first guy that you want to get blocked. So now you should see here that uh, Zach Martin should rogue great JC Jackson. Yeah, there it is. He absolutely destroyed him. And then I was trying to hold on to the ball long enough that we were going to be able to uh, be able to uh, catch another block from him. But again, I'll show that to you again. Let's uh, set this defense up one last time. So we know how this defense looks. You know, they offset here, they offset here. The fact that it's a play action call is also gonna play to your advantage. Should be able to suck some players to the inside. Again, use this motion. A lot of players are gonna think that it's a flood to the right side of the field. When really it's just getting a guy out of the way. Bang, there it is. Stays on his feet. Now watch again. It's a pretty good block animation downfield as well. And we're able to pick up that touchdown. So there is the screen protector. Uh, I like it better. I think from what we've seen in this short sample size, I like it better on the tackle spot, especially if he could stay on his feet uh, on this. And just because that one felt good, let's do one last rep there uh, again. Let me actually, I promised I was going to put one step ahead out there. So let me go ahead and do that first. So we'll put the one step ahead. CB flip package. And here we go. Motion Robinson across the formation. One thing I forgot to mention is you can snap the ball so he's an extra blocker on the on the right, but you see right there that if it's man coverage, sometimes it glitches through. Uh, you can motion, you know, you can leave him as an extra blocker. Uh, again, if you're just doing this though, if you know it's a three man rush, there's no point. If you feel like they're blitzing, probably should call another play anyway. But here we go. There it is, he stays on his feet. Guy's slow to get up. It's another great block. Be able to get out for a touchdown. So if you're facing man coverage, this is the way to go, guys. PA jailbreak screen. You guys know all the elements of screen passes now. It's man coverage. Their guy will actually blitz the quarterback if you hold onto the ball or scramble. Uh, and obviously the jailbreak screens with the three pulling linemen are the best way, the absolute best way to move the ball with safe throws against the three man rush one step ahead purple zone meta. If you guys like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or complaints, drop those below. Hope you guys subscribe to the channel. Make sure you guys check out gridirongameplans.gg. Again, lots of great content over there on the website in the vault updates. Hopefully see you guys over there. If not, hopefully see you guys here with our next video upload. Until then, this is Zan. Get in the lab and good luck.